to friends. My name is Constance and this is Cruelty Free Musings. Welcome to another makeup challenge. Today we have five days of bold lips. Now why, you may be asking yourself, is this a challenge? As I have mentioned in the past, my weakness is lip colors. I have more lip colors technically than anything else. If you count individual pans of eyeshadow, I have more of that. But as far as like units of, I have way more lipstick than I have anything else. I have like 40, somewhere, somewhere in the range of 40 lipsticks. And my largest other category is like, I have 12 eyeshadow palettes, 13 eyeshadow palettes, something, some, somewhere in that range. Uh, 13, 15, somewhere, somewhere around there. So easily twice as many lipsticks as I have anything else. And I have always been drawn to the bold, the bright, the out there. I had a Kat Von D lipstick for a hot minute, you know, the studded kiss lipstick before it was reformulated. Uh, super dry and draggy. It was like a sparkly orchid purple. I called it alien blood because, you know, aliens don't have normal color blood, right? It's probably purple. Right, so I was drinking alien blood and that stained my lips purple. Don't worry about it, it made sense in my head. So anyway, the point is that I have a lot of bold lip colors and I have just gotten out of the habit of wearing them. It's partly panning. I am taking kind of a, I don't want to say a month off of, of panning lipsticks because I have one technically still in my pan, but like I only have one lipstick in my pan right now and I'm not working very hard on it. So I'm kind of taking a month off. So I am giving myself a month to play with whatever lipstick I want basically. And I decided to make part of that be a video where I am playing with the lipstick colors and combinations that I have just gotten out of the habit of wearing because I have been panning a nude and a mauve, which is basically the color of my lips, and a grayish and you know, you know how it is when you're panning, you're like, maybe it's just me. When I'm panning, I tend to focus very tightly on what I'm panning. So like, I have other foundations than this foundation, which is the one that I'm panning. Um, and the only one that I have touched is the one that I use as a mixer to correct the color, which we've actually gotten into the, the into the period of summer where Swan actually matches me. Hallelujah. It's gonna be like three months because as soon as the days get shorter, I peel right back out again. But for two and a half months, I am going to just be wearing Swan by itself unadulterated and loving it. I love not having to mix foundation. Anyway, when I am panning something, I tend to focus on it very intensely and only wear that thing. So um, that's why I completely fail whenever I do an eyeshadow pan because I just am not that dedicated. I shouldn't say completely fail. I did succeed resounding success at panning that um the Kat Von D shade and light 
quad in Rust because I just always used that, um, you know, I always used the one as a transition shade and it was great, it's perfect. So ideal transition shade. I'm kind of tempted to just depot it and throw away the rest of the quad. Now that I'm thinking about it, because, you know, I have space in my, um, I have space in my, in my Z palettes and, and look at that. I have so much shadow there. It would last me for like three years. I would have a nice neutral transition shade for three years. Anyway, anyway, so I tend to focus very intensely on the things that I am panning and be very dedicated to them. And I have been panning lipsticks with great energy. Let's just say that, great energy and focus. And so I have not been playing with my bold lipstick and I wanted to do that. So here we are and let me get into showing you pictures and swatching the lipsticks that I wore this week this five days. All right, so first of all, um, I had a reason to wear lipstick on, uh, uh, to wear makeup on Sunday. We went to our congregational picnic. So I started off the week with uh, this beautiful orange. This is, I don't know how orange it's going to really read on camera. It kind of reads neon. From, from what I'm seeing in the screen, it's kind of reading as neon. But this is, hopefully it, I'm pretty sure it shows up better in the picture. It did on Sunday when I took the picture. So this is the most perfect orange for my complexion. Most oranges I can't wear. I can't do terracotta. I can't do pumpkin. Orange is a really tricky color for me. But there's this hue in the orange spectrum, which is almost cantaloupe. And which I love because it has all of the energy of orange and it reads very orange and it's fantastic. And, but it doesn't make me look like I am actually dead. Because that's a thing with me and orange. It's not good. It's not good. Anyway, this orange is basically that color in a lipstick. And I love it. I love this color and it's the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche. Um, the color is Ginger Snap, so if you're interested in going into a Sephora and swatching it, it is Ginger Snap. It is the perfect orange for a cool toned, very fair girl that still wants an orange. So there we go. Swatch number one. It's a beautiful formula. As I have mentioned before, Bite is one of my favorite lip purveyors. Just in general, love Bite. Uh, this, I had it in my pocket so that I could reapply it after we ate, and it held up on a summer day that was 90 plus, probably close to 100, it's been 100 the rest of the week, held up on my lips, in my pocket, I, I reapplied it I think I actually only reapplied it after we got back to the house. It held up fine through eating picnic food, hamburgers, hot dogs, baked beans, you know, picnic food. Held up great. These Bite Beauty lipsticks, they are amazing and I love them for many reasons. All right, day two was Monday, and that, 
that day was a purple day. All right, so first of all, I love the combination of a lip liner and a gloss. So this is R&B, this is a ColourPop lippy pencil. Uh, let's try, because like I can see the color from that swatch, but I don't think you'll be able to see the color from that swatch. Okay, so there, there we go. That's, you can kind of get a sense of the depth and intensity with that little swatch. And then I paired it with this uh, Buxom, uh, I think it's a full on, it's a full on lip polish. So this is the sheer one, I think. So here we go. Here's the gloss over half of it and you can see that it just kind of blurs it out and makes it pretty and shiny a little bit slippy combination still doesn't go anywhere which is fantastic so I wore this glossy purple lip and was very happy with that combination on Monday you know something about there is just something about a purple lip that gets me every time I it goes it goes way back to my childhood I have just gravitated towards purple purple that is way deeper than I should reasonably be able to wear with my complexion day three I was going to wear pink on day three and then I got about halfway through my eye look and I was like that's really warm I um, was playing with the warm brown mattes in the Gemini palette <clears throat> and I held up the pink that I was going to wear next to my lips and I was like it's gonna be be a red lip day. So I pulled out um, Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche uh, liquefied lipstick and this is in the color Braised. Um, it's a pretty deep red but on me it looks pretty bright because when you are this fair all reds within a certain range end up looking very similar. I have to go really deep like burgundy deep, like ox blood deep, before it actually reads as a vampy red on me instead of a bright red. So this is braised on most people, it would be kind of a brick red, but on me it's a brilliant bright red because <clears throat> lips in the middle of a desaturated face, yep, that'll do it. All right, <clears throat> and that means that day four, Wednesday if you're counting, was bright pink. If you can see that, that is bubblegum pink. This is the brightest pink that I own. Uh, this is also a relic from when I was not, when I was purchasing non-cruelty free um, makeup and skincare and hair care. <clears throat> this is the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Pro Matte Gloss. So it's a liquid formula, but it doesn't really sad. It moves, but not so much that it moves outside your lip line. It's really comfortable. It applies over the top of itself really nicely. And um, the color 300 Blushing Ambition is Barbie pink and I will say that it's not a color that I feel like I l enjoy wearing in the winter time it's definitely a spring summer maybe fall color for me I mean in the part of the world where I live summer lasts basically to the first week of October so if we're just talking about temperature, I can wear this for like six months of the year. 
but um, I find that it works better with my skin when it's actually the swan color, which is slightly more yellow than my winter color, rather than my winter color, which is more like still the uh, peach perfect, but cloud this time. So um, this is not a color that I typically reach for when my skin is a little bit more cool toned. First of all, because um, my lips are a lot warmer than my than the rest of my skin. So like my lips are basically a desaturated deep red like this. They're like a essentially a rosy red. So putting a candy pink blue based bright bright pink on my lips in the middle of winter when my skin is at its coolest, when it is its most blue-based, pink-based self, it's just not a great combination. It looks really unnatural. It looks like I have frostbite. So I do still sometimes do it, but I pair it with a lip liner. Um, usually a very deep, like, brown, for example, in the winter. Not yesterday. Yesterday I wore this by itself. It looked great. You are, of course, seeing pictures of all of these. As I talk about them, you will be able to judge for yourself. And now we get to today. Today we have brown. And because it's me, I decided to also put metallic lip gloss on. So brown is not, brown is like the one color that I don't typically reach for. Like this bright orange, this bright gingery orange, absolutely, 100% in my comfort zone. Has to be the right makeup look? Yeah, yeah it does. But, you know, not a problem. Purple. Oh, please. Oh, please. I love a purple. Red. Basically a neutral. Red is basically a neutral. Especially for, for the very fair skinned of the world. Once you get comfortable with wearing red and adjusting your complexion so that you don't look washed out, you're like, never going back. This is so classy. At least that's how I feel. That is how I have felt since freshman year of college. And then bright pink. Sure, it's not a color that I reach for that frequently, but there is a time when only a bright pink will do. Brown, however, is a color that Yes, I own it in a lip liner, and I also own it in a little mini because the mini came in a set, but it's not a color that I buy intentionally to just make my lips that color, right? Like a deep chocolate. First of all, it's going to look a lot vampier on me than it does on a lot of people because I am pale. I am very pale. I am so pale that most drugstore foundations don't have a shade that works for me. <clears throat> so there was just like a, a, a hole in my head where I was like, what would I do with the brown lip color and there were a bunch of dots there. And that was it. No actual thoughts of substance. What would I do with a brown lip? Let it sit, I guess. So this, this is the one that I can actually consider a challenge. I bought this lip liner actually in the middle of winter 
when I was like, this lip liner is too bright for me at this stage. But I held on to it because I was like, summer is coming. Summer is coming and it's a gorgeous lip for the middle of summer. And it's true. It's gorgeous in the middle of summer when my skin is slightly golden based instead of very pink based. So I bought this lip liner to be a counterpoint, a deepener for a lip color that was a little too out there. I never intended to wear this by itself. So I was like, what better thing to wear during bold lip week than this coffee brown? So here we are. It, um, it goes on dry skin a little bit patchy, which I really noticed this morning because I sort of fell into bed last night without doing any like I took off my my makeup and that was about it I didn't I didn't take any of my vitamins or medicines that I take at night I didn't lotion my hands and I did not put on lip balm last night so when I woke up this morning my lips were really dry and I was like well well, I mean, I wasn't really intending to wear this by itself anyway, but let's just add a lip gloss to smooth out the patchiness, right? Okay, so I'm going to swatch this by itself so that you can, you can see what this color is by itself. This is a Huda lip strobe. I really dig the formula. It's nice. It's a, it's a thick gloss. It's not too sticky. It's very tenacious and you can see it's like legit orchid purple with a strong gold shift. So now let's get a little bit more and apply it over top of the purple, the brown. So you can see that over top of the brown, the purple kind of disappears. And it's just this really strong metallic shift. And there's that one little corner over there where I didn't apply the gloss on top of it. <clears throat> this gloss is, I, I love its chameleon properties. I have, I have worn it. I don't, I haven't worn it over this before today. I've worn it over another brown lip liner, which I no longer own. I've also worn it over this. This is R&B, which is this very bright purple up here. And over this, it looks like a brilliant metallic purple. And then by itself, it's kind of a sheer, beautiful, glossy purple with a gold shift. So it's like, this is one of those amazing lip colors that you buy it once and you pair it with two different lip liners and you wear it by itself and you have three completely different looks. It's the only Huda beauty thing that I actually own. I have owned a lip kit in the past and it just... It did not make the cut in a previous declutter. I got rid of various parts of it in various different stages. I think I held on to the lip liners the longest. They're nice lip liners. It's just that the color w didn't exactly suit me. This, the color, really suits me. So, there we go. Because if there's a thing that I can talk about for half an hour, it's lipstick. I hope you enjoyed or learned something or both.
Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel like, and goodbye for now.